That's what I, I do uh, and I will do if I start uh, inbound um, content creation with video. Like it's just the golden standard of the market and you want to be the leader of your industry. But yeah, I launched my first TikTok and I get like 500k views on TikTok <laughs> and several other views on uh, Instagram and other. Hey, or the creator economy, if you want to call it like that, with that transactional mindset. How can I see like an immediate ROI return on your investment uh, as soon as I start to spend? Right now, I have 30 people who work with me. I have an Avengers team. I have great clients and everything. And right now, I'm just focused on a CEO task like vision, management, recruitment. So yeah, welcome guys. In this video, we are going to be just talking with Cedric. Cedric has like a very successful agency in the French market, specifically for coaches, entrepreneurs. The idea is that we are going to be going over like entrepreneurship, content strategy, specifically like on YouTube, how to grow on YouTube, how to generate more leads. So that's kind of the idea. So yeah, my man, thank you for being today here and looking forward to this conversation. Hey, Ryan. Hey, everyone. Uh, thank you very much you to invite me on your podcast. And yeah, hope uh, we're going to share a lot of value on this one and hope my English will be good because I don't <laughs> talk a lot of English actually. But yeah, let's go and hope it's going to be a great podcast. Absolutely, my man. No doubt. So yeah, for the ones like, just like for the audience to give a little bit of context, why you don't tell us, Cedric, like, what is it that you do specifically? What does Numadeo like focus on? Just for context and we can kick it off from there. Yeah. So my name is Cedric. Uh, I have an agency called Numadeo uh, who specialized on the French market to inbound growth on social media for entrepreneurs, infopreneurs, coaches, and CEOs, like everyone that does personal branding. And we help them to grow uh, on uh, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, uh, all like social media that provide videos. At the beginning, we were focused only on YouTube, but of course with 2022 and uh, all uh, the, the social media that puts vertical video, we change our offer and we also now um, offer some um, content strategy with TikTok, Instagram, etc. with the vertical uh, content. And uh, yeah, we are focused on the French market since uh, two years. So I launched uh, the agency at the beginning of 2021. Before that, I was doing that in freelancing as a solopreneur and uh, right now we are 30 in the agency so 30 people work in uh, we work with the biggest infopreneur entrepreneur in the french market uh, maybe for some e-commerce guys who knows uh, yomi denzel we work with him uh, and like every kind of niche uh, in the info product market. And yeah, we have great success story. We also work sometimes with some rapper, uh, some influencer extra for other type of, um, of content. And um, yeah, basically we do like YouTube, TikTok, Instagram strategy, and also like video production uh, as a, in the other parts of the agency um, like offer. Makes sense. I love it. So uh, I guess the first question that I do want to ask your brother is like, Based on all of that experience that you have already gathered by working with people, not in, not only like on YouTube, but also in our social media platforms, as you mentioned, TikTok, Instagram, what will you say are the main like a uh, things that someone can do, a content creator, a coach or entrepreneur to pretty much skyrocket their results when it comes to inbound lead generation? Like a couple of things that I would like to address here are first, like what are the expectations that they should have? Uh, regarding like results second what is also like the effort that is probably going to be required from them one thing that i see like on every market french market english market everywhere is that when an infopreneur want to launch a video strategy on social media especially like tiktok even youtube also like they are doing the same video as everyone is doing even people are in different niche and they're doing the same content like seven tips to uh, start a business like every type of content like that where you just like say what everyone is saying and also in a bad like shooting way in a bad editing way like everything seems so weak it's better to do something than to do nothing but you see that it's weak and when you do content on social media you want to skyrocket your audience and have lots of like followers and everything and also not just followers but people who will buy your offer you need to do unique content and content that will uh, match with your offer and follow like the trends if you mix like really good content and really good like 
form and really good intelligent things that you're going to say and also follow the, the the trend that are actually on the market like this is just the golden way to skyrocket your standard like you need to do two type i think if you are an infopreneur or coaches to scale your your audience on social media first one is to give value with face cam video but not as i said before the same thing that everyone doing like just be original and be specific and focus on your niche on your audiences and and thing like that this is not going to be like from today to tomorrow you're gonna have like 20 id to do with face cam video you need to work on your contents or hire someone who's going to do it for you but you need to have like original content. And the second one is to trending video, like follow the trends. Currently, I don't know if you saw, but uh, there are a lot of trends with like, for example, Iman Gadzi who doing just a video where he's on the yacht and you have a tweet uh, on it uh, or a video where you have just some caption, like two phrases, but with the good music that is in trend in actually, like currently the good music and things like that. And you just do that. And this is where you have the most like chance to have a lot of you and to say to the algorithm of all social media, my content is good. My content uh, like attract people and they can put him. Uh, like in front of, of a lot of people. So that's what I I do uh, and I will do if I start uh, inbound um, content creation with video. And like they, you will need to work to do good content. Like you, know, you cannot do good content in like uh, two minutes or 10 minutes. You need to do it to, to work a lot or you need to hire the good people to do it with you or for you. Also, this is what we do and this is what uh, Ryan do and this is, uh, we know what we're doing and we have a lot of case studies. So I think you can do it by yourself, but it will take you time, but it's possible to to skyrocket with that strategy, I think. And it's really simple when you see. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a simplified version of as cliche as it sounds, like what you are saying of following trends is just a matter of making sure that we are working on what is already successful. No need to reinvent the wheel. Just make sure that we are following what it's already proven to work. Actually, something, my man, that I really like on what you are telling me or kind of like to summarize your strategy. First of all, focus on, of course, what we know, providing value, making sure that we are talking directly to the ICP that we want to talk to our target market, provide value to that market. But besides like the other component is just more going for the trends to, I assume that is more to get like that exposure. And with that exposure, we drive that traffic, of course, to our other valuable content and later down the line, like trying to uh, convert those potential leads into, into customers. One thing that I do want to ask you, because I find it like very inter interesting, Cedric, is regarding how will you advise someone to do exactly what you mentioned of pretty much like standing out. How can like a coach or entrepreneur develop kind of like that thesis or unique point of view to really stand out? Because you and me know that there's like plenty of competition in this like creator economy. So how can a new creator or entrepreneur stand out pretty much from competition? For YouTube, like YouTube is a, is a social media that takes time. The only thing to have a lots of view, a lot of subscriber fastly, it's to go on social media that do vertical video, but you need to see social media as a funnel. You see, you're going to have the mass traffic with like TikTok, with like Instagram Reels, YouTube short. After these people will see your content, will see your profile, like you will see uh, your Instagram profile, your YouTube profile, etc. And the, the people that going to subscribe you and uh, look into your profile going to be interested about what you say and your uh, your content and what you can propose to them. And this is where you need to like good in your profile to convert them on your uh, like uh, landing page or thing like that. Or you need to have good content to make sure that the people that subscribe to you are going to watch you, watch you, watch you, watch you. And after like in one, two, six, 10 months, maybe go to your website to, to take your program or everything. And here, when, when we talk about YouTube, it's very difficult right now to, to be original on YouTube and to have a clear fan base on YouTube. But when you have like a good fan base or a great fan base on YouTube, this is where the real buyer are. And I think for me, like the, the community you have on YouTube is the most valuable community you can have on every social media. It's the most like valuable community you can have on social media because it's so hard and so difficult to build a good community on this social network and to have like a good engagement. We see, we, we see a lot of um, like... Um, 
channel that have like, I don't know, 10K, 20K, uh, 50K subscriber, but only have like hundreds of view when they put a new video. And what is, when you have the real flow and when you know that you have a, a great market fit and you do good content, it's when you have 10K subscriber, but you do 50K views. And this is where the real fun begins. And this is like, I don't know, like 0.01% of the YouTube uh, creators. Uh, but I don't want to discourage people to do YouTube because people who have a channel with, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 subscriber and will do 200 views, the 200 views are qualified views. And that's 200 people that can buy your offer. But when you do 500K views on TikTok, it's not 500K people will buy your offer. It's even may maybe less than 200. So the, the view that you have on YouTube is very, very qualified and you can like have a great convention rate on uh, on YouTube. To, to answer to your question about content, I think for sure you need to follow the trends and see what other competitors are doing and doing by your own, like not just copy paste, but do it with your vision, with your uh, expert expertise uh, with your um, your state of knowledge, like how you see the business or how you see your niche about the topic. Like for example, I don't know. So I have an advice to um, rise your um, productivity uh, or to improve your productivity. You need to say really what works for you and what how you manage that in the daily basis and do it like a creative way, not. Don't just be seated in front of a camera and talk during 30 minutes. Do some uh, inserts of you that uh, personalized inserts. Uh, give some template that people can uh, use. And when they will ask for the template, you you take the, the email address. Have a good edit, like uh, take an editor or work with an agency and have a good editor with like a real branding, not just a random edit uh, that you're going to pick on uh, Fiverr and the next video is going to be another edit that are not in your branding. No, you need to create a branding that represents you, your brand, your vision. When you have that, you educate your community and people who will watch your video, like to your world, to your vision about business. One example that I take a lot is about the work we've done on Yomi. Yomi is the number one uh, infopreneur on the French market on uh, e-commerce. And why he is the number one is because we work about branding on the long term, like uh, we work with him since three years right now, I think, uh, before uh, it was uh, my um, shareholder who worked with him uh, as a freelancer. So that's why uh, I say three years. And we work a lot about the quality. When you see the YouTube video quality and the branding on his video, I think is uh, one of the best branding that uh, you can see on the YouTube markets. And uh, people know that. And when people come to Numadeo and ask us, they all say, we want the same video as Yomi. And they, <laughs> even if I didn't know, we work with him. Like it's just the golden standard of the market. And you want to be the leader of your industry and the golden standard of your market. And for that, you need to work on your branding and all, and that's pass par but by your, uh, your YouTube video, by your Instagram, by your TikTok, by your landing page, by everything, by by how, how you talk and how, what you give in uh, the free content. Because what you give with your free content represent what you, the quality of what you can give in your pay content. So if you give like awesome content for free, imagine what uh, people will think you, they can have if they pay with you, you see? So this is really, really huge and really important. This is what we say at everyone we, we work with, with uh, us. Like, yes, we will um, think about subject, et cetera, et cetera. But yes, we have copywriter, copywriter who will maybe do some research and help you. But the thing is, you need to put work on it and we cannot be in your head. Even if we do everything, we cannot be in your head. And you need to put your uh, vision and your... your like um, personality. Yeah, your personality and how you see the subjects uh, as you, uh, as a unique person to... Like just to be different as your competitor, because everyone has competitor and everyone likes people like how they talk or just the face they have. Someone that's going to see one person on the real estate market, maybe not going to buy with him, but going to see the same, uh, the, the same other person will do the same content, but he's, it's another head. They will buy because they, it's fit better, but it's just how people have feeling with people. Just give you the, the opportunity to have more clients uh, is to just create content. And one thing is uh, to, to finish about this topic is 
it's better to do something that is not perfect than to do nothing because inbound marketing it's a long term uh, journey and faster you begin faster you're going to have results even if it's not perfect so just do it and also with doing 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 record 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 a uh, video 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 you're going to be like best in um, interpretation in your um, what, the way you talk the way you be the way you're wearing and the just I'm I'm searching word in English, but like improving yeah. the quality overall. Yeah, the, the quality of of your personality and you were talking and everything, and also after you can invest on editor, on good editor, on good camera and everything and everything. But step by step and just begin as fast as possible. So that's my my advice. I love it. No, no, no. I absolutely love it. That makes a lot of sense. I definitely agree. When you are telling me regarding like how to stand out, that you mentioned the importance. So pretty much a way that I will put it to summarize is just that your personality and who you are as a person is represented in your free content because as you mentioned showing at the end of the day your content is an extension of you and everything that you show your branding the graphics the video editing quality what you talk about unique point of view on every like matter or subject is going to be very important just for like potential people that might be interested in your services and prospects in to see what you truly are about so i really like like that take on your free content or your free videos are just like kind of a sneak peek on the actual pay content, right? So yeah. I love that. And one question that I have for you, brother, is regarding like, what do you think? Because actually we have discussed this in the past regarding like client acquisition, maybe going to going to a, events and masterminds, all of these. What will you say is kind of the relationship between pretty much like going to events and in per, like in-person events and content creation? And also the second part of that, that question is kind of like, what will you say is the importance of relationship building at scale? Yeah, it depends on what you work on. But if you are like a coaches or an infopreneur, I think it's not as important as agency owner to be on events, but you need to be, if you are an infopreneur or coach on events, to be on the stage. You see, this is where you're going to have a lot of uh, convention. I'm a lot in this game of infopreneur, even if I don't do info product um, selling, uh, because I know a lot of people like in my friends that doing that. And I see all the background and I'm also in several mastermind that talk about that. And uh, one thing that is really huge, it's that when you... You want to close like high ticket offer, you can do it online. But when you go on events and you speak on stage, this is where you're going to have a lot of leads that you can close and for your um, yeah, high ticket services. offer. Yeah. And how you go on stage? Because you are you have a good uh, social media and you have a lot of followers. You're going to have offer to go on stage when you have a great community. Look, for example, Alex Ormosi. Lots of people want to have him on his mastermind or on their conferences or events because he have a great social media. And what's gonna allow you to have great social media? It's that gonna allow you to go on events and have like, I don't know how you say in English, but people will be like, oh, that's him. Oh, wow. And everyone will want, will want to talk about uh, with you and will want to have advice from you. And like, it's just the image that you're going to have. And if you are a uh, uncno people on masterminds, people don't going to give you importance and they're going to see you as an asker and not as an advisor, you see? It's just the, the vision that people gonna have on you uh, when uh, they will see you on events. So for me, build a, a personal brand is really important for the next year. So why? Because it gives you access to new people. Because you have a, a good personal brand, you can talk with people that just not consider you if you didn't have a personal brand. You can be the smartest guy in the world. If you don't have like the connection, just people not gonna, gonna hear you. and gonna take um, importance uh, for what you're saying so if you have a good social media people will consider you and also it's hollow for sure to sell your product uh, easily because you're gonna have like trustful image on the market because other people follow you and follow your program so for sure that's gonna like have this um, snowball effect on the market so I make a mistake, me, to not build my personal brand since two years. And right now I'm working a lot on it. And I act, I, I um, launch my personal brand like very uh, strongly. T tell us but, about the uh, results. When I said strongly, it's uh, when uh, like I've, I will do a lot of content. Like I already prepared a lot of content, but also, yeah, I, I, mean, I bro, think it's... Re regarding it, your, it, your short. Yeah, yeah, it's... 
I, I don't think it's luck because I do it for my clients every day since three years. But yeah, I launched my first TikTok and I get like 500k views on TikTok <laughs> and several other views on uh, Instagram and other. But uh, yeah, that, that's where when you mix good content, good quality, good brand image, this is the result you get. And this just confirmed me that, yeah, it's mathematic. You just uh, need to apply the, the equation that we give you. And this is going to work if you are patient and you, you do the, the good content. I don't know if it's answered to your question about events and personal brand, but I think it's uh, it allows you and open you a lot of door when you have a personal brand in real life. Absolutely. No, no, no. It, it does answer my question. I actually want to ask you like a follow-up question on that. And regarding like going back previously to my other question is going back to what you mentioned on TikTok. Exactly. My man, it's just like a matter of Following a proven formula, what you already know that has worked for your clients, for my clients as well, and executing on that, and you'll see the results. One thing that I wanted to ask you is, based on what you just told me regarding like in-person events, how you can leverage that for multiple opportunities with people, networking, how will you do like that? Or what will you say is the relationship between in-person events, relationship building, and content creation, relationship building? It's because... I consider that, of course, when we are creating content, something that I like to say a ton is that we are just building relationships at scale, right? We don't have to be one-on-one -on -one with everyone, but we are virtually shaking hands with everyone. Everyone is knowing us without we having to know everyone. So if we already know like the importance of those type of relationships when we are talking about like the in-person events and in-person masterminds and programs, how much more powerful will that kind of be when we are focusing just on like leveraging our personal brands and the content strategy. The first thing is to to be important is that to really be authentic, like just not play a role on social media and not be someone that you are not. For example, I don't know if it's real. I didn't meet him in real life, but Andrew Tate on, in his video, I don't know if he's the same like uh, hardcore man in real life you see so for me you, you you need to be the same one that you are in your video to be authentic with people and to connect with people uh, once again it depends your ethic it depends your vision of life of business etc but for me and for my clients like everyone it's only ethical people that i work with uh, when i know that there is something weird or some uh, like a trading opportunity or something uh, strange that they want to sell I, I just say no bro we don't work with you but um yeah for me it's really important to be authentic to be to not scam people for sure, because when you do some action in entrepreneurship, you have a debt that grow in according to your action. If you do good action, your debt is positive. If you do bad action, your debt will be negative. And I saw a lot of people who scam people like three years ago, but it's not like big scam, it may, but it's, it's always scam. Just to not deliver things or, and people, know each other in this world in info product world in the business uh online business world everyone know everyone and everyone talk about everything and one rule that is really true is one people that is not happy with your services will talk to it at 10 people but one people will happy with your services gonna talk to it at one or two people when you do bad thing and when you do bad like you scam people like you are good on inbound marketing but after you don't deliver or you you scam when you will be on real life people will just just judge you and know that uh, you don't deliver because people talk talk everyone talk mm. uh, and i have lots of example on the french market of people like that uh, i'm not gonna mention them for sure but uh, yeah just you have a debt and this debt you need to pay it at one time and this is why for me i always do like clean businesses i never done like uh, scam businesses or everything even when there was a lot of opportunity with nfts like at the end of 2021 i didn't be with in this crypto world. with nfts yeah, thing like that. Because I'm like, maybe I'm just a shaman or I don't know, but I think about karma and I think about this debt, entrepreneur debt is real. And I talk with that with several really good entrepreneurs uh, who do several millions and millions and they agree with me and they agree with this vision. To end with that, uh, just be authentic, be uh, like a good businessman or girl, uh, deliver your product. And because if you don't, uh, everyone going to know it and... Everyone talk about this. I absolutely agree. And especially like info product work. And even if like people, I mean, it's just a matter of honesty, right? Even if people doesn't 
know that you are not delivering delivering on your promise is not good to cross that type of lines and besides that yeah i think in this space in the service based businesses it like reputation is everything so extremely important yep. to have always deliver on your promise even over delivering your promise and yep. keep like that reputation intact and um, so my next question cedric is regarding also like co- going back to content so I'm sure you have already experienced this as well, but how do you address or how do you balance those expectations from business owners, entrepreneurs, or wanting to start to post content and immediately see a ROI versus you knowing that probably content I, as a long-term game is more about like building brand, generating leads, generating like that a demand or creating that demand pretty much. So how do you address like that transactional mindset that most entrepreneurs that start to post content have versus the probably real actual game for the long term. I have a lot of uh, this uh, objection in closing call about ROI. Um, the thing is that you cannot track the real ROI that the inbound marketing will give you. You can, but it's not like real statistic because you can you can just track it with some links or things like that. But the thing is, you don't want to have a short-term business. And if you don't want to have a short-term business, you need to build a social media brand or personal brand. Uh, because if you want to be on the long-ter- long-term game, if you build a social media brand or a personal brand, this is going to give you tons of leads for free, like, like literally for free. And this is where your like the, the fire of your brand will grow, grow, grow. It's just put like oil on the fire that you create with your offer and with maybe your pet traffic or your um, um, mouse to hear um, businesses, referrals. So for me, inbound, uh, yeah, for sure. It's not like ads. You put one penny, you get two penny. Uh, it's not like that. One thing I saw also when people talk about that and are really greedy about this question is people who just didn't validate their offer and just people that's not as as strong as they said in marketing and just people that don't are uh, really know like the importance of inbound marketing for sure we need to educate them and we need to teach them if they are uh, like um, not trained about that and don't know that but um, the thing is if you want just ROI on the short term bro just do ads and that's all. <laughs> and in, in 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 three months, your copywriting will be bad and you will not be break even. And and that's all, that's all. But if you want to build a real brand, if you want to be the number one in your industry, bro, just do inbound marketing. This is going to take time. This is going to take effort and work, but this is going to pay on the long term. And once again, I have tons of case study that I can share with People that uh, we help and also people that we don't help, but it's just a general case. And if you put the work into it, you're just going to take the the price, uh, like the effort that you put right now, you're going to get the results in. It depends always, but in three months, in six months, in one year, in two years. Absolutely. No, I, I love that approach and I totally agree because this is actually like a common objection as well that I hear. And, and I think, as you mentioned, probably people that says that is just because are not fully aware of the actual, like, how does the content strategy and each platform is going to match each of the steps of the funnel. So, for example, in our case, when we are talking about most of the times, like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, we are just thinking about, like, top of the funnel, right? right? So, like, awareness mainly and probably also consideration. Also, another thing that I think that a, a lot of, like, people overlook as well is that, what you were mentioning, the content, if someone is already interested on your content, let's say you get you got that lead from paid advertising. If they see your content, it is going to like ease up and uh, is moving up and make much faster like that sales cycle, just because you are, yep. as you mentioned, like already a top leader in your industry. So I totally can relate to that because I think, yeah, it's a matter of mindset and a lot of people or entrepreneurs specifically like enter to the space, to the content creation, a, or the creator economy, if you want to call it like that, with that transactional mindset. How can I see like an immediate ROI return on your investment a, as soon as I start to spend? And it's just not not how that not how social media works, and also not a, the intent a, at the end of the day. So yeah. To to answer that, uh, when people are gonna see your ads, they're gonna tap your name on Google, and if they see <laughs> that you have a channel with five k or 50k they're just gonna say oh yeah i'm gonna watch content and after we can retarget them and 
let's go. But if they see there are nothing and they will just pass the pass their um like just walk away and another competitor we have an ads on the same topic they will also search him and they will see that he have social media and they will be a client of this competitor and not you <laughs> i love it no 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 content is definitely extremely important for the consideration stage uh also also we were previously talking about like johnny denzel i know that's one of your biggest clients as you mentioned is the golden standard and for anyone that hasn't looked like that channel literally the the like episodes or the videos seems like from netflix like literally the quality is outstanding <laughs> is just something else so two questions first what is your biggest client i assume that is jomi like in terms of the results that you have delivered how has like those results that you have been able to provide to that biggest client have impacted uh, their business or businesses i think yomi yet is one of our biggest clients, but it's just uh, it's not just thanks to our work that he have all this shiny and his success his success for sure we are a part of the equation of the formula but it's not only us he's a really great marketer and his team also are a really great marketer so he does a lot of marketing action that give us uh, give him a lot of uh, of followers and everything uh, but as i said before it's more about uh the the market in generally and when people are gonna see an advertising about drop shipping or e-commerce they just gonna tap this on youtube and the first one who gonna be on the top of the list gonna be yomi even if they see an advertising for someone else they will see yomi uh sometimes and because it's the number one with uh of the brand on everything people will uh, buy with him. In terms of, of results, yeah, we are, uh, we've done a good part uh, to grow his social media, but it's also thanks to his team and his marketing and his vision. But if I can take another, um, another example in real estate, real estate niche, it depends the goal of your client. For example, uh, I take um, one client that is Baptiste Jolie. is one guy on the real estate market. And his goal was only to convert, like only conversion, not uh, build a big brand on everything. So we are, we will focus on that. And like he got like 200, 300 views on his YouTube channel. Uh, he has 10K followers, I think. So he got like minimum like views, but... We track it, the the leads that come in from uh, YouTube inbound, and like he pays, I don't know, maybe between four and five k per month with us for the services, and like every month he was like, bro, I just closed two clients. Every like each client is twenty five k, and th this lead came from YouTube. We're like, okay, we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a work, and yeah, so this is. To to um, mention back what I said before, it's not because you don't have lots of you that what you done don't have an impact of your market. If you do good content and if you have a good strategy, you just touch the good people and the good the good uh, people that you want to convert. For example, him, you want to convert like old people. So we were focused on that and topic uh, about that um, type of uh, of people. And this just converts. So we, we talk about uh, after, uh, before ROI. This is good ROI, I think. <laughs> so um, <laughs> Absolutely. So, so yeah, I don't know if it's answer to your question, but yeah, for, for Yomi, he's just the, the number one. If we take another example that people we didn't work with, for example, Iman on the SMMA, SMMA market, uh, he just puts a real golden standard like production, uh, brand uh, strategy and everything since uh, I think six or eight months. And this worked pretty well. You saw his statistic like uh, from the three past months, he went, I don't know, I think 700K on a YouTube subscriber. Uh, so yeah, he has a really great content strategy. If you want to have inspiration, just see what he do. It's really, really, really great marketing and inborn marketing. So, so yeah, and there are several examples on the market. Yeah. Alex, Alex Ramos is also a very great example. He literally yeah. blew up not so many months ago. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot of examples of people that just go all in into 
uh, content production, making sure that their brand strategy and content strategy on YouTube and other social media across platforms pretty much is on point. And you see like the results that they get in terms of opportunities, businesses, all of that. I love what you mentioned regarding like the ROI for that real estate client. Because yeah, it's also like, this happens to me a lot as well. I work with like a multiple lawyers and coaches that sometimes are just like in very specific niches. And the thing is with them, we don't want to focus, they're not in like a mass market industry. So we don't need to get them like crazy results in terms of views, in terms of like subscribers to get them actual results. I actually think I told you about this, but I was working with a client that is in the trading space and he was selling like an offer between it was like medium ticket, five hundred to a thousand dollars per like program, and he does like a launch every one to two months and closes like a hundred people, and he's like a channel under ten thousand subscribers. So easily he was making like fifty thousand per launch and with a small channel because it's very like specific. He has already become like a thought leader. He has already built his community to good quality content. Results definitely comes in those in those scenarios. Something, this is kind of like a, a pivot from the type of conversation that we were having until this point. I actually brought it, so it's super interesting, but I saw on a story that you were posting like some, I don't know, like years ago, a, like lessons and things that you like have been learning across your journey. And I come across this very interesting, like kind of quote, I will probably not quote it exactly, but it said something like, life is a game, no cheat code. Do you remember that one? Mm -hmm. I think when you start from scratch and me, I start from scratch. My parents are have a job. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money in France. Like I, I was in the mid class. I, I go to school and everything like I never misses anything, uh, but I didn't have lots of money and I came from scratch and now I'm connected with all the biggest influencer on the French base. And two years ago, I was making video for my restaurant in my town, you see, and everything is possible if you do work um, for sure. Like you don't need to count your time. You need to work a lot, a lot, a lot. Also work intelligent, like with intelligence, uh, not only just put works. And if you see yet that you don't have results, just change your strategy. But at the beginning, you need to put lots of works. And it's what I've done. I have stories where I left the, the office at 5 a.m. And I just woke up at 10 a.m. And I go back to the office uh, like during, I don't know, maybe one year, not every day for sure, but like it was lots of day for sure. I was a lot in the operational things uh, and just scaling my, my activity. Uh, but at the end, right now, I have 30 people who work with me. I have an Avengers team. I have great clients and everything. And right now I'm just focused on a CEO task like vision, management, recruitment. And I did like, if I want, I can just go on vacation two weeks and the business will run, you see? Uh, so I think the effort that you put during a short time, like one year or two years, like it's so nothing besides the, the freedom that you get after. And just because you're lazy, you will just not take the work and not do the work and just complain about your life in two years again you see for me it's just about uh how much you want to put in and you can begin in whatever situation you are if you have a, an internet connection and a laptop it's good uh, even a phone you can launch an activity right now yeah you can do it at the beginning two hours per day after your work after you can quit your work and it's what I, it, it's what i've done so yeah, hustle, it's a big part in the formula of winning and of successful. Just put the work and it will work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that, bro. And I have like multiple questions because I can see and I relate to that a ton as well, like to hustle mentality, mindset, making sure you're putting in the work and you will see the results at the end of the day. Like this principle, right? You reap what you saw. It's that simple. So basically you get the results from your inputs. So Two things. First of all, will you mind, uh, Cedric, like expanding on your maybe like how is like your I'm super curious to hear what was like your progression from whatever you were like previously freelance, like uh, doing freelance job or even before. How, how did your entrepreneurship journey start? What's kind of like yeah. your background with your yeah, family? It's, everything? A, it's a crazy story. So um, I was like um, in school. I don't know how you say in English. It's like uh, 
university after like 18 years old. I was in a company who sell uh, software for City Hall uh, to manage like cemetery, to manage uh, like uh, the city, like the, the people and everything. So not a fun job. And the first day I remember I go to the office and they put me on a desk with an Excel file, a phone, and they and they say, sell, let's go, sell. <laughs> and <laughs> you say that you, you say that to me, the man that cannot take an appointment with the barber in the phone. <laughs> like I was scared about that. And you you, you were super me, shy. Yeah, I was super shy. I didn't have uh like trust in me. Uh and yeah, it was crazy. And during two years, I was forced to do that to have my uh, my diploma, and uh, this gave me a lot of confidence. It was two really hard year, but this gave me trust and power in my uh, talking way and talk with people and be confident with people because I I need to do that to have my diploma. And in this in this um, during these two years. For sure, because I didn't like my work, I began to be interested about entrepreneurship. So I watched it on YouTube, several uh, French influencer and, and things like that. Also, I began to be um, interested about bodybuilding and I was a lot in bodybuilding, but right now, uh, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, be before I was a lot, I even thinking about competing uh, before, but I didn't do. And... What I've done is uh, I began to start some several businesses. Like I tried dropshipping, I tried uh, trading, I tried everything. And one thing is I've done like a bodybuilding vlog. Like I just filmed myself in the gym and saying what exercise I was doing and think and talk and things like that. And I needed to have the skill to edit this video. So I, try, I began to edit this video. Also, I just done compilation of uh, athletes on YouTube. Like I download uh, some shots that uh, athlete put on YouTube. I mix them with a good music and I uploaded them on a YouTube channel of uh, like bodybuilding motivation. And I've got like uh, 2000 K views, thing like that. So it was crazy. It was like in 2015, 16, you see. And so I mastered the skills of editing video just by my side, by looking tutorials and things like that. And I was in Facebook group where uh, people talking about entrepreneurship. And one guy posted uh, a post uh, where he said that he was looking for an editor. And I just like sent a message. Hey, um, I never do, do that for people, but I know how to edit videos. And he said, okay, let's do a test. We've done a test. He agrees. And he said, okay, but if you, we, if you want to work with me, you need to open a company. So like a freelance uh, statue in France. And this is where I begin to, uh, I created my, my, like my company, but it was a freelance uh, company. Uh, and I began to uh, be paid uh, $15 per YouTube video, like $20 per, per video. And I was beginning to make 100, 200 euro per uh, month. And this was at the end of this two years uh, program. And after I continue with um, like uh, uh, a bachelor and I continue to do like uh, freelancing in the side. And at the end, like I was making, uh, I don't know, maybe 700 euro per month with my freelancing. And I was doing a 1.5K with my job. The day before uh, the France announced the, the COVID, I took the decision to quit everything and focus on entrepreneurship. So I say that to my boss and he say, okay. And we didn't have time to sign paper and everything. And at the end of the day, the, the, the president just told that we have the lockdown. So during three months I get paid and I can work on my business. <laughs> so that was a crazy situation. So during three months, I just booked um, like uh, courses uh, like of infopreneur and I just begin to master like filmmaking, editing, uh, thing like that. And at the end of the lockdown, I just begin to to uh, mass uh, outbound uh, mailing, like in the French markets, like with a really bad copy. It was crazy, but I was like really hungry, and I like sent towns and towns of mailing uh, every week. I sent back an email. I I've done like every week follow up, and until the the man didn't. Uh, like Reply. insult me 
like or reply. Uh, I continued. I continued to follow up. I was nothing to lose. You see, uh, and like, bro, two months after that, I was making six k or seven k per month. Um, okay. Like, in five months, I I uh, achieve like the the maximum amount you can have in one year uh, as a freelance. You see. Uh, so I was making like 15k per month uh, as a freelancer uh, for editing video. I was doing everything: editing video, landing page, filmmaking, community management. I was doing everything, uh, but I was making 15k per month. Uh, but I was working 12 hours per day, and <laughs> at this stress, moment, no balance. Yeah, yeah, no balance. Just work, work, work. Uh, this is where I stopped bodybuilding also, and this was in 2020, and. Here at this moment, at this point, I was thinking about, okay, now I need to take a decision. Do I continue like that or do I create an agency and I build a team and a real business uh, that will uh, scale on the long term? And this is where I just um, launched Numadeo um, in February 2021. Um, I uh, beginning this, uh, this company with my shareholder, Alexander. Alexander is a man who were doing the same thing as me uh, on the same market uh, with other infopreneurs. Um, the thing is, he was only doing like uh, editing. And me, I have all this marketing vision about uh, YouTube uh, agency, uh, scaling inbound, etc., etc. So we mix it with our uh, strength because he is a very good like artistic man. Uh, now he is, he is the artistic director of uh, Numadeo. And we mix his own strength and her clients. And we were doing like so good work and deliv over deliver everybody. Like everyone was doing referrals. We also launched a good referral program. And like every month, people just took a call with us. We have like a bad landing page because we didn't have time to build a, a website or a landing page. And just people, People in the info product, sorry, space uh, know know us and contact us, and every month we're like, bro, we we need to hire, we need to hire, we need to hire, and like we were like after two months of activity, we were five, after eight, ten, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until now, and like I just began like to relaunch like outbound or prospection uh, at the begin at at the middle of twenty twenty two. So during like one year and a half, we didn't have to to do prospecting. Any outbound? Uh, yeah, outbound. Referrals. Yeah, it was only inbound referrals, and we built our also our inbound uh, brand, inbound image, uh, and uh, we have a really good community on social media, and like for everyone on the French market in the online businesses know us. Like everyone, we work like by far or near with everybody. So that's a cool situation because we have like a monopole on the market. <laughs> uh, and that's that's really cool. And yeah, so that's that's um the story of how we built uh, Numadeo. It was a really cool journey during uh, the first year, like in 2021. I also worked a lot like to build everything, build the processes, hire the team. Continue to be in the operational to be sure that P that client will be uh, satisfied. It was a really long journey, but right now everything uh, runs good. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a, I have a great team, and yeah, I'm really happy with the situation we get uh, now. I don't know if uh, it was not so long for the story, but yeah, this is no, no, no. That <laughs> uh, uh, that's perfect. That's <laughs> perfect. I, I'm very. I was very interested in knowing like your journey and i mean there's like a lot of things that i've seen that are just like so cool to be honest first of all the fact that you build that business up to 15k per month like just working you alone that's insane like the amount of work that goes into that i imagine and on the other side of the coin because we were mentioning like yeah working x amount of hours per day i'm sure that at this point because you are also looking you're working like that hard still but now our first in actions that are more high leverage and second at certain point you gotta you have that ability and freedom to choose what type of task you want to perform so it's kind of like different but it's i mean i mean it's it's definitely very impressive and didn't know you were like because to be honest that's kind of like not so long ago like what yeah two years ago it's <laughs> like that's two years nothing. ago yeah yeah 
2020, uh, like June 2020, I left uh, my job. So it's like uh, <laughs> two two years and a half ago. Yeah. What a journey. Definitely what a journey. And also something that I'm very impressed about is because, of course, we work. Uh, I work with you in the in the like consulting side of your business with a, a agent sale. One thing that I'm like impressed is that I have seen that you are super detail oriented, like process oriented operations. When you show me like all of your systems within your agency, it's insane the amount of structure and everything that comes into it. So like thinking about building all of that solid infra infrastructure just in two years, that's a ton of work. That's a ton of work. <laughs> and I can see why yes. a lot of people are, are not going to be able to compete even if they want to. It just like yeah, it's when you have an agency, it's all about process and how you can eliminate every kind of uh, human interaction for to to deliver the clients. So this is the goal. You need to be like an hunter of uh, human interaction in your agency. And when you know every step to deliver a client and you know exactly what everyone is doing, even every little, little micro task that you need to do. When you, you know that, you know what how you can after process it, automate it, standardize it or everything and be sure that you're going to like kill this human interaction because human interaction equals ins insatisfaction because human interaction equals um, percentage like mistakes, of, fail errors. of failure, mistakes, errors, and also uh, like delay to have a, an action to be make made. So yeah, the, the thing is um, we processize the most difficult uh, agency like uh, business model in the, in the markets because inbound video is only about human hand who do something and just about human. When you want to scale, you just need to hire more human. So it's the most difficult business model to scale when you are an agency. And we achieve to process it and to like every month we try to improve that and we're trying new things to improve that. Uh, but we are at a really good stage. And to be honest, I analyze lots of uh, agency process, even agency that's done a lot of uh, money. And we were pretty good. Like uh, uh, I I never seen like a stage at, at the point we were processes uh, in other agency. Um, so... I don't know if it's a, a strength. I think the at the end of the journey, what you want is the profit. Profit. So if they do good profit with this system, so cool. Uh, but um, if you want to scale, you need to have a process that are amazing. I don't know if it's the best one, but uh, it works pretty well right now. <laughs> uh, very, 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 <laughs> very well. Yeah. I mean, I have been benefited from all of those like advices and and, and guidance in that section as well. I think. To be honest, the, the operation side of things, I think, is one of the main constraints for a lot of people. Honestly, to every level of entrepreneurship, mostly because I feel that people that get into this industry, and it's not an exception for me, are more from a creative type of thinking, you know? We like marketing, we like, I don't know, like visually appealing things, paid strategies, all of these things that are more from the creative side of things. But when it comes to delivery... You got to make sure everything is organized, structured. We have, as we are mentioning, like systems, processes in place, making sure that SOPs, a automation, the right software, everything is in place to make sure it runs as smoothly as possible. So, yeah, I really like that. I mean, what are kind of your plans for the next year? What, what do you want Plan to do with the money? Next year, yeah. So we are several projects. Uh, I didn't do uh, the real like conclusion of this year and my real goal for the next year. But the big vision about first Numadeo is to continue to scale on the French market and go on uh, more like corporate personal brand, uh, like go out from this infopreneur market and try to help like startup or big like entrepreneur, like um, real business, like not info product is a real business, but from um, like physical business or like people right. that everyone know, uh, you see, uh, because they are um, in the big group CEO or thing like that. So try to have this type of uh, client could be great. So this is the work that we are doing about acquisition and also we can maybe try to work on the english market so this is a, 
a great challenge to work on this one uh, because um, our team is French, nobody speaks English. Uh, so we need to find great um, partner to work on that. And maybe we're going to find this one, <laughs> but, and I hope so. And, <laughs> um, and yeah, so this is the two big challenge for Numadeo. Continue to scale. We have a good client satisfaction and launch the English market. For me, more personal uh, goals is to really launch Agencio. So you talk about it just before, but it's like a coaching program for agency owner who want to scale uh, their business. So it's to launch a really huge this um, program uh, because I only done like a story in uh, last year and I took like several clients or people <laughs> that come from me uh, as you in inbound, uh, in, inbound. Uh, but yeah, to be honest, it's like eight or nine people maximum. And uh, I didn't market it. I didn't show it. I didn't talk about it. I just done a story and that's all. So yeah, I want to launch a lot uh, this uh, this program uh, to like literally break the market and give lots of value uh, for people who want to to scale uh, this this um, this business model. And also for sure, this goes with the agency or goals, but to scale my personal brand. So yeah. Uh, I don't know how I, I don't set uh, like a uh, number of followers that I want to hit, but um, yeah, just want to to scale this uh, personal brand and be constant, consistent on every social media, not to give up after two or three months. So yeah, we I built a team to to do that, to help me about that, and um, I think we're gonna do great work. I hope so. So that's yeah the the main focus in uh, the next year yeah in terms of goals yeah I mean I love it brother and to touch on the agency I mean I've been with you just like for I don't know two coaching calls plus like all of that extra support assistance and you have already been able to see like the results just by implementing that so super valuable and actually you know you know you know this bro do you know how did I find you because what you uh, said the, the 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 podcast I think we, I've done with uh forty four podcast I think it's called. Yeah, 44 podcasts. Yeah, I was saying that I saw that podcast. I started to like follow you. Content as well. I just saw like your, your content on the Instagram, your stories from time to time. Then like one, two months later, a, um, another like friend of, of mine started your coaching because he found you as well from the podcast. He started the coaching with you. Just one, one session that he had, word of mouth, told me about it. I booked a call in a link that is not even in your profile. It's like in a super yeah, yeah. secret like... I don't know, super, <laughs> super hard to find. And we have started. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure yeah. if it is performing already very well and it is super like underground kind of secret, I just imagine how we'll do when you launch it. Yeah, yeah. and even e inside the program, like I'm building a huge new program of like it's it will be the same um biggest uh golden nuggets that i'm gonna give but more structured and everything and uh yeah the podcast is 44 podcasts uh, with franco uh so big up franco <laughs> <You see that. laughs> just uh see uh on social media if you want to follow but um yeah i want to do like a really really huge um uh just coaching program uh, on this market because mm -hmm. i I really analyze the markets and even on the French or English markets, I don't find something that I like or that I find like really uh, meaningful to scale. So let's see how it works. I don't want to, to be like egocentric or say I'm the best, but uh, I will try my best to to be the best. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure, bro. Uh, I mean, what I think this is a perfect point to like end the conversation. One last thing that I want to say is for people that want to like connect with you, find you where they should go. Yeah, uh, the most active social media I am is social, is uh, Instagram. So it's at uh, Cedric D S uh, Chai, I think. Uh, and uh, also you can find me or on other social media like um, TikTok, uh, YouTube, etc. Um, I'm launching also an English uh, social media. I don't know um, in what what will be the name, but um, if I do good content, you will see me in your feed. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. 
uh, but yeah, Instagram is the best one, and you can send me a message if you have any question. Uh, I will, it will be a pleasure to help you for free. And yeah, if you want to book a call, just book a call. Uh, but yeah, with pleasure. Awesome, awesome, brother. Appreciate you uh, being here. Love the conversation, and let's see what the 2023 holds for us. Yeah, of course. And thank you, thanks to you, Rand, for for this podcast. Really cool uh, to uh, give me the, also, this opportunity to talk in English and to improve my English. Uh, so very cool to talk about businesses with you. And let's see uh, how it's going uh, next year, as you said. That's it, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.